in this video, we will be talking about Elementary's event graph and just visual coding in general in the real world. So the interactive story is in the description of the video below, and we're just gonna go ahead and get started and there's a voiceover, so we'll listen in. And if there's anything else I want to add, I'll just jump right in. So let's get started. Elementary event graph, introducing visual coding. So what is visual coding anyway? Visual coding allows us to code by manipulating graphical elements rather than typing text. So this basically just means that we have graphical elements. It could be blocks um, usually, and we use these graphical elements to code rather than typing out everything on a keyboard. There are a couple types of visual coding languages. The first is Blockly based, and the second, which is Node based. Some examples of programs that use Blockly are Scratch as well as Code.org. You can take a look at what it kind of looks like in the image below. Click on See More to take a look at programs that use Node based visual programming. So maybe you're already familiar with Blockly based visual programming where we snap blocks together. Um, and I think many of you might not be familiar with node based programming, but it's also it's actually used in a lot of professional programs. So let's take a look at some of them. So up first are elementary and Nintendo Labo. These two programs are meant for young kids to also be able to use, so it's much more user-friendly and meant for educational purposes. So the other ones are for professional use, and we'll take a look at some of them a little bit later, including Unreal Engine and Unity, which are both game development engines. So the last three are Houdini, Blender, and Massive, and these three are professional animation software. And once again, these three all use visual coding environments that are node based. And we'll take a look at some of the things that they've done, but for sure you've seen some of the movies that they've created at your local movie theater. So before we go too far, I just want to show you what node based visual programming looks like. And we're gonna take a look at elementary as an example for node-based visual programming because it's a lot simpler. So click on C code to see what the code looks like to make our blue goat figure animate. So I'm gonna click on C code. Now, if you're not familiar with elementary, it looks a lot like Google Slides or PowerPoint where you have a presentation view with the slides on the side and every slide is, the, is its own page. So the front side of the page is called the layout design and it's just like uh, Google Slides and PowerPoint. You can drag and drop different elements like a presentation, write your story, add images, add your background, and then there is a button at the top called Event Graph, which flips the page over to its back side where you can then code your animations and interactions. And let's go to the next page. So one of the key differences between Blockly based visual programming and node based visual programming is how we deal with functions in parallel or functions that are occurring at the same time. To give you a better understanding of this, let's just click on the red animate button to see an animation. Okay, I'm gonna click on the animate button and something happens to our bunny. He's moving right and rotating at the same time. So let's learn more. When you click on the red animate button, you'll notice that the bunny moves and rotates at the same time. So it moves 50 pixels to the right and then rotates a full circle 
or 360 degrees at the same time. So you'll notice that I have two buttons, see the code in Scratch and see the code in Elementary. And you can click on them to see kind of how this code would work in both of these environments. So let's see the code first in Scratch. So in Scratch, you will need two events and two scripts or two pieces of code. Then you'll need to time each of the pieces of code to run at the same time correctly. So in this case, since we are animating right after we, well, in this case, it's clicking on the green, green start button, uh, we won't need to put a wait function anywhere. So the animation in this case is a lot easier to do. But if we were to do the animation, let's say after a voiceover plays or after another animation, then we would need to time it. So that way the script would know when to execute this rotate and, uh, and move functions. So we have the two functions. The one on the left is how we move. Um, in Scratch, functions are very, uh, very much like when you write the code in a text editor, you would need to use like a repeat and change the position by a certain amount of pixels. So in elementary, it's a little bit different. We have functions representing just larger animations. This, in this case, it's move and rotate, but we have other ones like scale or bounce. And this is just to make it easier to create um, good looking stories at the end. So let's take a look at the code in elementary. In node-based visual programming, such as elementary, you can branch your code. So you'll notice on the orange on click block, there are two connections. It is connecting to move and rotate. So it is executing these two functions at the same time. This allows you to create more complex pieces of code without necessarily needing to time every single animation or recording to the exact second. Let's take a look at an example that uses voice recordings. So you'll notice we're not using any loops here. We're just moving it. And in Scratch, it'd be similar to the slide function. And rotate is just the animation is rotating to that position. So we do have loops available. So if you wanted to make loop three times, then basically when I click on the animate button, the bunny would move and rotate three times. So basically it would be like if I clicked it three times, one, two, three, something like this, but I would only need to click it once to do the whole animation. So let's take a look at the next example. After hours of searching, the pirate Alfonso discovered a hidden temple in the jungle. I'm sure the treasure is in here. So this is a typical example. When you're writing a story, you'll have a narration and then you'll have your character say something with a voiceover. So let's take a look at how this would be coded. Here is what the code looks like for the previous page. We are only using two functions, play record sound and fade. Notice that we don't have a wait block. After the first narration recording is finished, then we can branch and execute two functions at the same time. So yeah, this makes it very easy to uh, sequence different animations without needing to have any timers anywhere in your script. So let's move on and let's now take a look at visual coding in the real world. I mentioned before that visual coding is used in professional game development engines as well as animation software. Let's check it out. 
Let's first take a look at Unreal Engine. You may not have heard of it, but you have definitely have heard of the games or maybe have even played some of these games. So the most notable one is Fortnite and Unreal Engine has also developed Kingdom Hearts 3, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and Minecraft Dungeons. There are hundreds of games developed by Unreal Engine from small independent studios all the way to ginormous blockbuster companies <laughs> that have used this software. The second one is Unity, which has developed games like Hearthstone, Hollow Knight, City Skylines, and Kerbal Space Program. So once again, these are professional game development engines that, you, that have a visual coding environment built into the software. So let's take a look at animation software now. Up first is Houdini. So Houdini is a special effects software. It has created a lot of the special effects in some of our favorite movies, such as some of the superhero movies like Black Panther and Captain Marvel. They have also done a lot of the animations in animated movies, such as Moana and Toy Story 4. Up next, we have Blender, which is an open source software for animation. And they've done things such as the credit sequence of Wonder Woman and the graphics of the Emmys in 2018. Last is Massive Software. They're a software for large scale human interactions. So an example of this would be the huge battles of Lord of the Rings where there are thousands of people. Well, they're not actual people, it's computer generated people. And this animation is done through Massive using a node-based visual programming environment. Another example would be Game of Thrones as well with also once again, the large battles. And they've also worked on some other movies and TV shows. Uh, Chronicles of Narnia is another one among others. Great, so let's go to the next page. So maybe you don't really believe me when I say that some of these professional software have node-based visual programming built in. So we're gonna take a look at both Unreal Engine and Unity and their visual coding environments. So on the left-hand side, we have Unreal Engine for Blueprints, and this is just a very simple example of a player movement. So in this case, you can press the left control button and crouch. Otherwise, when you release it, you uncrouch. On the right-hand side, you have Unity Bolt. Beginning in summer of 2020, Bolt is integrated into Unity's default software package. So that's pretty cool. And you have just uh, some uh, controls on this page. So that's 2020. And I didn't put any uh, examples of the animation software because a lot of the code looks a lot like spaghetti and it's all over the place, but you get the idea that you connect blocks together like so. The animation software generally has a lot more blocks that are much more complicated to create all the special effects or um, different uh, lighting, for example. So you might say to yourself, well, I'm not a coder. What's the point of visual coding anyway or coding at all? And I always like to say that visual coding is more than coding. It's about writing down a process in a logical manner. And we see this often in flowcharts. Flowcharts, like the one on the right, are used to visualize a workflow process and logic. They allow us to graphically decompose a process into smaller parts and spell out the logic. So flowcharts are used when creating any standard operating procedure, which is a fancy way of saying a step-by-step -step instruction manual. And these are used by organizations in all industries to achieve uh, efficiency, quality output, uh, uniformity in performance, uh, maybe reducing miscommunication and even complying to 
industry regulations. So they're used in any field and for many purposes. In most organizations, flowcharts are developed before a single line of code is written. It is used to outline the logic and process and communicate it before any lines of code are actually written. Flowcharts require the writer to be very detailed and analytical and logical in order for this process to have no errors. So as a programmer, I use flowcharts all the time before we write any code because the coding language doesn't particularly matter, but the logic definitely does. And that's it about elementary's event graph and visual coding in general. Hope you like this video and it gives you a better understanding of how programming is developing in the professional world today. And I would just like to leave you all with a few um, tips, which are that, first of all, the language of what you're learning doesn't really matter too much, um, like I mentioned. And what really matters is being able to clearly define what you're doing deconstruct your problem and communicating that with others. Programming languages will continue to develop things that I use now weren't even developed two or three years ago. So lots of things will change five or even 10 years from now. And maybe in the future, we won't even really need text programming as much anymore. And things will be more focused on visual coding or even without even us coding, but more like computers coding themselves. So we'll see what happens in the future. And thank you so much and give a like or subscribe if you like this video. Bye.